as an incredibly inquisitive and creative species, humans have for millennia not only successfully created meaning and order from the complexity and chaos that surrounds us, but have continuously found ingenious solutions to problems that have profoundly impacted our existence. From the development of language and agriculture to the Industrial Revolution, more recent advancements made during this fourth Industrial Revolution, the path of human innovation is truly remarkable. Now, when we think about innovation, we tend to, which is, by the way, the process of turning novel ideas into useful solutions, we tend to think of it as a highly iterative process where one incremental advancement follows another so that over the time course of human history, the arc of human ingenuity tends to perhaps look like a fairly linear phenomena, gradually ascending over time with perhaps the occasional blip for major innovations like the development of the wheel, the printing press, or electricity. But what I find particularly interesting is the relatively recent um, notion is that the trajectory of human innovation has suddenly and fundamentally changed. And the notion that we currently find ourselves en route a path of tremendous disruption. If humanity has crossed an important inflection point, if our technological capabilities and innovation output are growing exponentially, not linearly, what potential impact does that have on us? And how can we think about architecting impact in this fourth industrial revolution? As a doctoral student studying epidemiology about 10 years ago, I had a front row seat to what would become a transformational change in the realm of the life sciences. At some point, it became relatively clear that a constellation of technologies emerging from the margins of genomics, data science, and systems biology were about to collide, and in the aftermath, totally disrupt and redefine the fields of medicine, healthcare, and drug discovery as a data science. Now, the exponential rise of these individual technologies was certainly something to behold. But what was more profound was how the intersection of them vastly disrupted the entire ecosystem. Take drug discovery as an example, where the intersection of data and machine learning has totally catalyzed um, or redefined the process um, by utilizing large data sets uh, to discover and develop new drugs. It's also catalyzed a rather intense global and ongoing effort to sequence the genomes of millions of people around the globe. In the realm of medicine and healthcare, this idea around the democratization of data proliferated by the intersection of genomics and data science is starting to disrupt the traditional healthcare paradigm by enabling healthcare consumers like yourselves to readily obtain access to your data uh, involving biology and healthcare. Just consider how millions of people around the globe have utilized services like 23andMe to derive important actionable insights into their personal genomes. But it's at the intersection of artificial intelligence and diagnostic medicine that I think we're about to see the most profound innovation. You see, over the last 12 months, we've seen some extraordinary examples of how deep learning algorithms have outperformed highly trained medical professionals in the fields of dermatology and radiology. This is likely to play out in the realm of population health. Consider the example of using a smartphone to diagnose skin cancer better than a dermatologist can at a clinic visit. And now also consider that there's six billion smartphones in circulation, which providing us the real opportunity to suddenly provide much of the world's population, including those in remote regions, with access to low-cost, high-quality healthcare services. This is potentially transformational in terms of population health. Now, rather than the exception, the disruption of the life sciences industry merely looks like a, a line item in terms of a, a much broader structural shift in the foundations of human innovation. In fact, dozens of technologies across numerous domains are enhancing exponentially for decades. Think about 3D printing, solar panels, quantum computing, advanced materials, all of these enhancing exponentially with consequences for virtually every single industry, from transportation and energy to banking and finance. As we go forward, I have no doubt that some of the major transformations and innovations will continue to come from the technology of artificial intelligence. And let me, 
And let me give you a couple of examples why. Um, here's an example from Google's DeepMind AlphaGo project. So AlphaGo was a, a deep learning algorithm that learned to play the incredibly difficult and complex game of Go. As documented on a Netflix program, the algorithm was highly successful. In fact, it demolished the field, beating the best players in the world. And I think in hindsight, this is going to mark a significant point in time. It marks a point in time in which algorithms exceeded the capabilities of humans to perform complex creative tasks, like playing the game of Go. Or this example, also from Google, from a paper published recently, that trained a deep learning algorithm to predict a whole bunch of clinical features from a simple image of your eye. In this case, the researchers found three really profound things. The first was that the algorithm was highly adept at predicting these clinical features, which included things like your sex, your age, your blood pressure, your smoking status, uh, your BMI, all again from a simple image of your retina. The second and more profound discovery was that the algorithm extracted novel features about the eye, the biology and the structure of the eye that was previously unknown to humans. And third, the algorithm was particularly good at predicting a future, your future risk of developing cardiovascular disease. It actually performed as well as our best current clinical model. The difference, however, is highly significant. You see, our best clinical model requires blood and blood chemistries and a whole bunch of other data points to make this difficult prediction. In theory, Google can now do this with a simple image of your eye. So if you've been paying attention, if you've been seeing the rise in these capabilities, or if you can appreciate the mathematical consequences of multiple exponents interacting, I think you're likely to agree that the foundations, the trajectory of human innovation, have certainly changed. And if you agree, then you're likely to appreciate why virtually every nation and every industry is fighting ferociously for a limited pool of talent in artificial intelligence. You're likely to appreciate why Canada has suddenly become a global beacon of innovation. And you might start to appreciate why seemingly sensible people are actually having a conversation that we might just be living within a computer simulation. So inspired by all of this disruption and innovation, I got deeply interested in using entrepreneurship as a vehicle for making global impacts. Shortly after my grad studies, I co-founded a biotechnology company called Sequence Bio that had the purpose of disrupting the drug discovery industry by used, utilizing these powerful machine learning technologies in conjunction with the unique population genetics of Newfoundland. The company was founded really on, on three key assumptions. The first was that the industry was about to be disrupted, and if true, high quality patient data was going to be necessary. It was going to be necessary to have large scale integrated data involving lots of clinical and genomic information, a resource that didn't really exist at the time. The second assumption was that Newfoundland was the most remarkable place in the world for modern drug discovery. And this really comes from three different features. The first of which is related to the actual people, the population. You see, Newfoundland has a, a, an interesting and unique history in terms of its settlement its history and its persistent isolation. What happened, in effect, it resulted in a population with a genetic architecture that's slightly less variable than what we would find here today. And that can be incredibly advantageous as we're looking for very small signals amongst very noisy data. The second feature was that the population had a tremendously high incidence of both rare disorders and complex diseases. And again, this can be very advantageous as we can learn a lot about biology from these affected individuals and families. The third feature was that the province had developed some relatively robust infrastructure related to capturing clinical outcomes, healthcare data on the, all 500,000 people in the province. So individually, these uh, attributes are quite unique and, and interesting, but in combination, they are highly unique on a global stage and incredibly powerful for modern drug discovery. The third assumption was that my co-founder and I, pictured here looking over the St. John's Harbor, knew exactly what we were getting ourselves into. And of course, that was absolutely not the case. In fact, I think if we'd known about the challenges ahead, we, put a, we would have likely chosen another path. In any case, I think uh, it can actually be rather beneficial to be a little bit naive in entrepreneurship at the beginning. Um, 
because as I said, it becomes otherwise a little bit daunting at times. So with those three key assumptions, Sequence Bio set out to develop one of the world's largest and most sophisticated data assets on human biology. We would do this by sequencing the genomes of 100,000 voluntary Newfoundlanders. And then in conjunction with these machine learning technologies, empower a new kind of drug discovery based on a much deeper understanding of human biology. Now, the idea of using sophisticated modern tech at scale to disrupt an entire industry was definitely interesting and innovative and exciting. But I would argue that that's not the real innovation. The real innovation was the model by which Sequence Bio would utilize technology to impart meaningful economic and social Im impact to the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. So the concept was that we, the company, would, in collaboration with community partners, simultaneously develop a globally significant and sustainable data resource that would not only simultaneously support innovative drug discovery locally, but would also be used to support better health healthcare outcomes in the province. You see, the data would be shared with the participants, with their families, with their healthcare providers for better decision making. And it would also be shared with government to support better planning and policy. In effect, Sequence had architected a unique opportunity to impact, to make a significant impact by using a really community-centric approach that would simultaneously support innovation, economic diversification, job growth, and better local healthcare outcomes. We had, in effect, architected a win-win scenario where politically it was supported financially and from an investment perspective, it could be financed and supported. And most importantly, the local community supported, the patients and the families and their care providers who were affected by these conditions and disorders believed in its purpose and believed in its potential for impacts. That, in my opinion, is the real, opinion, is the real innovation in Sequence Bio. And as we go forward, and as our technology capabilities improve, it's my hope that we can continue to sort of engineer social and other benefits, as well as chasing business and commercial opportunities with these technologies. Now, what I find fascinating to recognize, and I hope you'll agree, is the fact that you, as the next generation of change makers, decision makers, and innovators, will have no shortage of opportunities to make globally significant impact. In fact, I think it's likely that you will be bestowed with two remarkable gifts. The first is a very large basket of very significant global challenges, everything from climate and energy to equality and education. None of which have been properly addressed by previous generations for a variety of reasons, all of which now pose significant risks to civilization and humanity. But it's okay, you've got this, because you're also about to be gifted an incredible array of technological capabilities with which to go solve these issues and save humanity. Now, I know that sounds a little bit daunting, perhaps a little bit like a Mission Impossible scenario, um, a bit of a precarious predicament, but I think it's a, a relatively remarkable narrative to enact much needed global change. And it's happening. It's already possible, and you guys can do this. I think one good example is a company like Tesla. Tesla has not only leveraged the intersection of AI, machine learning, and sensors to give rise to the autonomous vehicle, it's also exploited advancements in solar and battery technologies to give rise to solar energy. In the process, not only has it disrupted the energy and transportation industries, it's made an enormous impact on climate change, an issue that, of course, affects us all, through a global fleet of autonomous electric vehicles, all powered by the sun. I think it's also a remarkable example of a company that has an ambitious purpose to make impacts. So, in this fourth industrial revolution, is it possible to architect some impact? And of course, if you look at the major technology companies, you will certainly see some clear themes. Themes like data, artificial intelligence, and platforms in the sense of how they build resources, derive and extract insights that can be, then be scaled as solutions globally and efficiently. And there are many other features 
that make these companies successful and impactful. But I think more than ever, the most important architectural feature for making impact during this fourth industrial revolution remains to be the profoundly simple concept of having a purpose, a big, bold, ambitious purpose to make impacts. It will help you set a course, navigate these challenges, and keep you afloat during the long, inherent, difficult process of innovation and impact. Thanks very much.